IT could be working on it remotely. They know the mean starts at home. Good morning. Uh, we'll call to order the Riverfront Design Committee meeting for February 6, 2020. Uh, roll call, please. Scott Howard. Here. John Postick. Here. Michelle Dean. Jonathan Heisel. Here. John Joyce. Here. Don Kasparite. Barbara Larson. And Dana Templeton. Present. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, approval of minutes. A motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? Any discussion? Vote to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Minutes approved. Item three, cases withdrawn, none. Item four, continuance requests, none. Item five, consent docket, 5A rather, uh, SRCA 20-00001. Zero 01, part two, at 1901 Southeast 15th Street. Staff put this on the consent agenda because we have no issues. This is in addition to um, one of the buildings at uh, okay. the school, okay. Crooked Oak School. All right. So we just need to vote? Unless you all wanted, if somebody wanted to pull it for, for discussion. There are representatives here from the school. Okay. Uh, would Would you all like to speak? Or okay. I, I right. think they're here in case you pulled it. <laughs> okay. I, I saw that deer in the headlights look there for a minute. Okay. So. All right. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion. I move for approval. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor of the applicant. Or, Aye. Uh, any, any opposed? Okay. Consent approved. Thank you. Item six, cases for individual consideration, none. Item seven, other business, or I'm sorry, 7A, PC 10641 at 1206 Exchange Avenue. Uh, what about... Uh, Things that Lisa pointed out last Friday in our training is we probably should have had one other category for activity, especially of this committee, which is how many rezonings you guys have, are seeing now. So this one is probably the largest that you've seen in a while. Um, so this is a request for straight zoning, which means there, you didn't see any conditions, you didn't see a plan because they're just asking to go from I-2, which is in moderate industrial, to R4, um, their, their uh, proposal, their intent is they want to build uh, an apartment complex at this location. So um, in the staff report, this is a site that apparently at one point had the old streetcar facility. And we had meetings with people about everything that had been buried out there. So you might have seen the last couple of years they cleaned up the site. And now, it's, for the most part, it's just all dirt. And it's bounded by exchange. Um, it's bounded by exchange western. We have I-40. You have Southwest Third here on the north, um, and it has a few pieces that are cut out of it. Um, but in staff's discussion, we discussed the uses and the fact that there's a lot of uses in I-2 that are not permitted in Scenic River. Um, and looking at R4, there isn't any uses that are prohibited in R4 by Scenic River. Um, and staff felt this actually kind of brings the site more into keeping with Scenic River and, you know, less restrictions in that, uh, from that perspective. And so staff is recommending uh, a approval, recommendation of approval to the Planning Commission. The applicant is here. Um, Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Had a party just for me on this <laughs> cold day. 
Uh, my name is Bert Belanger. I'm an attorney and a real estate broker and developer, land developer. I represent uh, Moyers Factory Warehouse, which is the entity that's under contract with the owner. The owner is a trust. It's an LLC. It's actually held by uh, and for the benefit of two uh, charities, um, I understand, Boy Scouts and Free to Live. Uh, it was a charitable trust set up by the Drabeck family from Drabeck and Hill. And it's been in there, I guess it's been in the family for some time. She's correct. It was originally the old streetcar site, and uh, we've gotten environmental reports, and it looks like a lot of cleanup has been done. And so we're encouraged. Uh, my background is, is uh, uh, on the development side is as a multifamily apartment uh, developer. I did the Brighton Apartments in uh, Paseo, did a lot of work with ERC properties around the metro, did a lot of affordable and mixed income housing. We don't have a specific layout and plan yet. In fact, I was telling Jonathan that we're meeting with our architects today to work on some layouts. Uh, we're in discussions with all the adjacent owners and neighbors, really about a, and since I see that your jurisdiction runs all the way to Reno, I'll go ahead and uh, explain. We do see this whole area as being sort of an opportunity to brand of the west gate, guess west would it be really kind of the the southern and southwest gateway to downtown along western um, all the way to uh, Reno. Uh, we, I actually am a property owner on exchange and have partners on both sides of exchange. So we're, we're working on some planning and looking at some users that, uh, some commercial users, in fact, the next thing we plan to do, that I plan to do in the area is to, uh, I've spoken to staff and uh, public works and we're going to work to uh, basically vacate exchange between the corner of Klein and 3rd on the southwest corner of the diagonal all the way to Reno and Western. Right now it's a dead end cul-de-sacs into in, into that corner, and it's really kind of all um, mucked up right now in terms of uh, the state having done its ODOT work in connection with the boulevard, and then it's it's finished. But uh, it sets up, we think, really nicely to create a commercial node that's a pretty attractive redevelopment that's probably themed after the market, after off of the farmers market, and it's. Uh, uh, continued viability, and I think it, it will continue to improve as well. So uh, that's just FYI. Uh, it has nothing to do with this item, but we do have a, a larger plan, and we are really sensitive to to um, you know, trying to make this a, a significant part of the gateway, as I say, to downtown. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. It really is a straight zoning to allow us uh, maximum flexibility for now, but we of course, expect to be back in front of you all when we have more definitive design. Does the committee have any questions for the applicant? Chair would entertain a motion. Motion approved. Any second? Second. Okay, can you, who, who made that motion? Uh, John. Uh, Thank you. Committee. And the second was? Impostate. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion approved. Thank you for coming down today. Thank you very much. Thanks for your service. Um, I think that I told the wrong time to the person that's supposed to be here for presentation. So I'm going to step out in the hall real quick and call him, make a call. Oh, I don't know. I was going to call you. Thank you. Thank you. Where's your Oh,
Trail Connection. I think they actually, I don't know if they did that. They did it at the last um, trust meeting. Tell them I'm sorry. Um, but we could jump to, um, we have a meeting next month. We we'll finally have the, the Boathouse District PUD, finally. So um, we do, I got it yesterday, so we, officially from Amanda. So we can, we do have a meeting, so please check that out. We do still need five for a quorum, um, as I was talking about earlier. So hopefully you all will be able to make it. Okay. That's on March 5th? Yes. We are having a meeting. That's what we have the we have the boathouse PUD. I forgot what number it is. Is there anything on uh, item A B communications? That well, just to clarify, you'll see part one of the one that you had on today. Um, they actually have quite a big project going on at at the school on Crooked Oak, and part of it I could do administratively because the existing building and then the proposed square footage total was going to be underneath the 10,000 square foot threshold, but the one you had today, the existing building is already over your threshold, and with the addition it's even further over your threshold. So that's, that's why it was in two parts. Um, trying to think of what else is on there. But if you have any questions about any of them, I could answer those. I appreciate you all attending last week. I think we had a we had a really good showing for our group. The table was almost full. And um, I think we had the most committee members attending. I, I was going to say that. Yeah. Yes. So appreciate you showing up for that. And the Parks Department is on their way over. Again, I apologize. Okay, this is item 8A of presentation by the Parks Department.
Okay, Brandon Boydson, Oklahoma City Parks. Uh, sorry for the delay, folks. So this is just kind of a informational process at this point, kind of get everybody up to speed on the plans moving forward for the Greenway Trail along the Oklahoma River. <coughs> so this is still in a very early stage. This is in a preliminary report stage. So this is just kind of getting everyone up to speed on where we are with the concepts at this point. I'm just kind of go through some kind of brief background as far as where we are at this point. Um, this is the overall plan is to connect the existing Oklahoma River trails to the Katy Trail, the Grand Trail, and the upper portion of the Eagle Lake Trail or the Tinker Draper Trail. So it kind of makes a lot of good connections through here. And so this is down in the southeast portion of our trail system. As you can see, there's kind of a gap there with several trails. Just a little bit of a background as far as some of the additional uh, developments and land opportunities that's going on around this area. This is kind of for a point of reference. Okay, and so there's the uh, the construction estimate as far as uh, what they're working with, and so far, you know, staying underneath the fix on the construction for uh, what's approved in the bonds. So here is the alignments for the connection itself. Uh, our consultants, which is uh, MacArthur and Associates, kind of has this broken out in four uh, different sections just to kind of be able to keep track of it. So section one is the connection that goes from the north side of the trail system where it stops on the west side of the Boathouse District, goes around the high active intensity area of the Boathouse District, continues on the north side, and then drops back on eastern and ties back into where the south trail ends. So it makes that loop on the east end of the Oklahoma River Trail system. Kind of, because right now, if you're riding the north trail, you get to the end of it, you have to turn around and go back and find another place to cross. Same thing on the south end, so this kind of allows that connection to happen there. Uh, section number two continues on from eastern and goes all the way up to 4th Street. Uh, crosses under some bridges and some things there where I-40 crossover is. Um, just a kind of a side note is we did originally look at that connection for Section 2 being on the south side of the river, but there was a lot of uh, right-of-way issues and some other constraints that it wound up being a better solution, more cost-effective, and all-around better solution to put it on the north side. So that's kind of the history of where that came from. Uh, section 3 is the, the last leg that would connect the Greenway Trail to the existing Katy Trail, and that would go along 4th Street. And then Section 4, as noted here, is kind of a little spur that would connect the, the South Grand Trail to this trail system as well. And so right now the South Grand Trail stops uh, right there at, uh, uh, I think it stops right about Reno and has a little turnaround and that's kind of the dead end there. So our consultants have kind of looked at some options of how to get across the Reno, how to do with some of the railroad crossings, and found some options that we can look at there. So, so a little bit more in detail as far as the first alignment. As you can see, there are, our consultants and our in the parks group has also worked with the Boathouse District and all these other uh, stakeholders that are involved with this to define this alignment and make sure that everybody's on the same page and is good with it. And so the alignment for this trail would be to push it around the outside of the active area. And then as the Boathouse District continues to develop and move forward, you know, there can be connections drawn from the trail into the development. But for the most part, this minimizes the amount of conflicts possible between pedestrian vehicles and the trail users. So moving on east, you can see the, where the trail would cross underneath the uh, the 35 on north and south shores. And then there's been a lot of discussion with the, uh, the folks with the American Indian Culture Center or the, uh, as far as that alignment and how to best put that in place that's going to limit the amount of potential conflicts for their future development. And so there has been extensive conversations with that as well. And then where it gets to eastern, looking at using the existing infrastructure that's there at Eastern. Um, our consultants will be working with Public Works and um, 
transportation groups to figure out, you know, the best way of getting that restriped so that we can accommodate a protected bike crossing us on there. And so there's enough space there that, you know, consultants and we believe that that's the, the best scenario and gives a good opportunity in lieu of actually putting a separate bridge across here, which would be uh, very cost intensive. So you can see the existing bridge on the right side picture. It has an existing protected uh, pedestrian walkway, and so it would be moving some of that barricade over, restriping those lanes to open that up to allow for uh, functional bike flow. And then the second section, uh, the green, as it goes across the north, you can see it just kind of follows the north shore, goes and works underneath the, uh, the flyovers for Reno, as well as the I-40 cross, uh, cross town there. And then also on this slide, you can see the, the connection between South Grand and the existing trail that's there on the south side. Uh, some people call it the Eagle Lake Trail. It was part that was constructed with the Tinker Draper. Um, but this kind of makes that connection to where the trailhead stops and the parking that you can see there just short of Reno on the existing South Grand Trail. And so here's a one of the railroad crossings that the consultants are working with, the railroad company trying to figure out if we can utilize that to get underneath that. And so that would minimize you know, the need to try to uh, come up with another crossing option and allow that to work out. Uh, so this, the, the north section continues on up and where it jumps back up to Northeast 4th Street, uh, be an opportunity to put a trailhead there so we'd have some parking and some other support assets that could go there. And then by, so from originally we were looking at crossing with the, the bridge that's on 4th Street, trying to cross the river there, but that is a very narrow bridge and there's a lot of truck traffic that goes through there, so that was another big concern that played heavily into moving this alignment to the North Shore versus leaving it on the South Side. And so the alignment continues along Northeast 4th Street, and then we will again utilize the, the existing bridge that crosses over I-35 as opposed to trying to put in a new infrastructure. Uh, that bridge is a little bit narrow, but there is still more room there than what was on the 4th Street bridge that crosses the river. So there is enough room to be able to restripe and reconfigure that to make that a safe, um, accessible bike, bike pathway. Uh, now for the fun part, and at least in my point anyway, is the different amenity options that our consultants have looked at. So these are opportunities that uh, trailhead, pause points, you know, potential art elements, all these things are possibilities that can be included either now or at a later date, depending on how funny stuff works out. So this is just kind of the, the long-term, you know, grand scheme of the aesthetics of the trail. And so one of the things they identified is, you know, there's an opportunity to put in a, you know, at the top of the, the screen there, the, the starting line trailhead. And so that could be a, a nice amenity for the river activities as well as the trail. So there's some other uh, connections in there. There's the, the trailhead up on the northeast end. And again, as I stated a while ago, that our consultants have worked very, good, uh, very closely with a lot of the stakeholders and have engaged them early on. And so here's just kind of some information of who all they've met with and the process that has gone through and have, you know, buy-in at the current moment with the alignment as it's shown. So kind of where we are in the process is, again, this is still very early on. And so the uh, preliminary report is scheduled to be uh, approved by council as kind of the next step. And so once that is approved and goes through that process, then we can engage the consultants to continue the design further. Any questions as far as where we are in this process at this point? Uh, uh, going back to the amenities, are any of those funded? Or are there um, any alternates? Or? We may be able to fund a portion of them. Uh, it depends on how the final costs come in with the actual trail construction once it gets budgeted out. Um, so obviously the primary purpose is to make the connections. And then if we can do that and those numbers come in well, then we will obviously include you know, what amenities we can get in the budget. Okay. Well, I think it's great that we continue to fill in, you know, our trail system because it's a great trail system so far and, and these linkages are very important. So I'm glad to see this is moving forward. Any other questions? 
Thank you for getting over here. <laughs> I was already on my way out the door. Matter of fact, I had to step back in to answer Paula's phone, so uh, I thought I was doing good. I was going to be here early and make sure I got it in and make sure it was going to work. And yeah, well, yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah. We adapt. We're on the fly. It'll all be. It'll work. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon. All right. Thanks. Okay. Um, item eight C. Comments from Planning Department staff. Just, we have a meeting next month. Please check your calendar. Thanks for coming last Friday. Appreciate it, and for showing up today. Okay, thank you. Item 8D, comments from committee members? None? Oh, and if anybody has any suggestions for training, we're all, our ears are always open. You can always email me or Paula suggestions or comments or whatever. I know we had a change of venue this year, so you might or might not have liked that. I, I remember getting an email yes, yesterday for the survey monkey. Oh, okay, great. So Lisa that set that up. Okay, yeah. please respond to that because we that is very helpful to us. Okay. Well, everybody be safe going home today, and we'll call this meeting adjourned. Thanks.